Hello, my name is Momo. I work for City of Tucson Parks and Recreation Leisure Classes. And I teach traditional Japanese metal smithing techniques and color on metal classes. In, in color on metal classes, uh, I introduce various ways to color metal and uh, one of the techniques I teach is called Champ Levé and today I'm going to be showing the process of how to do Champ Levé. And Champ Levé is a process that you etch the surface so you have a depth that you create and then you apply enamel. The area you etched, you put the enamel on and then you stone it down so it'll be flat and then you create this nice, uh, beautiful, colorful piece. And then the back is just um, nothing. So this is the process I'm gonna be showing today. Today I won't be showing the process of etching. Uh, to do etching, uh, you have to make sure you have proper equipment and then ventilation. To do uh, traditional etching, you'll be using this uh, ferric chloride, chloride, and it's very nasty. And you have to make sure you wear gloves and anything that splashes gonna get um, yeah, get damaged. So there was a few ways to etch and this one is I used PNP paper and PNP paper you can print out the design and then in a the negative and then you apply it with the heat and so you can go very detailed design and then you can see everything is covered with a packing tape so anything that's exposed is going to be etched so only this you can see this covered area that's going to be etched and anything that other area if you see dots or anything that didn't get covered you can see this black uh, paint which is uh, nail polish I use that to cover it to make sure it doesn't etch the area you don't want to be etched you can also use um, sharpie marker to create a very uh, interesting design of your own. So this is the piece that I finished etching and you can see it's pretty very deep and for Saint Levé you want to make sure it's a little bit deeper than the other one like this one is very quick etching and then this might work, but for Chan Levé, you want to make sure it's nice and deep like this. And this has been pickled and cleaned, and but you can still see some area. And then I'm going to be cleaning with this area with a brass brush and work in a sink. So I'll be using Comet and a little bit of soap and brass brush and I'll mix it to clean and enamel will not attach to the surface of copper if it's it has oil or any dirt so that's why I have to very very thoroughly clean up in order for the enamel to attach the metal So here's the after the cleaning. You can see it's nice and shiny, clean. And I haven't touched any area because any of your finger oil is start creating the dirt, dirty surface. So make sure you don't touch the area you want to enamel. I have a few enamels out here that I'll be packing inside this area. And as you can see, uh, because the base metal is copper, 
uh, clear or transparent enamel will not really show well through the enamel. So everything I picked is opaque enamel. If you want to use transparent enamel, you might have to do white first and then do the color. But it might be, I think it's a little bit difficult. Or you can use a silver foil on the ground. But again, it's more process involved. I picked some color in this palette so you don't have to go directly into the enamel. And you'll be needing a little brush. I used this bamboo stick that I made in order to go into these little areas. And then you need this clear fire. This is like a adhesive agent to attach the enamel with the metal and it's a liquid so it helps to spread this enamel now I'm going to start So this piece is finished packing the enamel and I use this mesh to hold this piece and I move to the top of the oven or kiln. So this helps to dry. Um, so the cali clarifier is been on and it's still wet. When it's still wet, uh, if you put straight into ki kiln, it kind of bubbles and then makes the enamel splotchy and then all over the place. So you want to make sure the clear fire is dry completely before you go into the kiln. To find out if this piece is dry or not, you can see by looking at it, the enamel is very powdery and no wet area so it takes about a minute or two you don't have to put it on there but it's faster this has been dried you can see everything is very powdery there's no watery spots so this is ready to go inside the kiln so this piece is ready to go into the kiln uh, the temperature I want the kiln to be 1450 and it's 1450 so I'm going to end put it in the middle shut it real quick and you have to make sure if it goes down you have to make sure it goes at 1450 and then start taking the time for a minute and a half so right now usually the temperature goes down a little bit since your metal piece is inside but it'll go back up and once it's 1450 you start the count okay it's a minute and a half so this is a minute and a half and this is what it looks like. If it's warping or something, you can put this iron right away before it gets cooled down. So 
the metal stays flat. So this looks nice. You wait this to cool down and then you what you're gonna do is put it in the pickle, clean it up, and then you are going to do at least two more times cleaning, packing, fire, clean, and then pack one more time and then that's the end of enameling. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy learning new techniques. You can sign up my classes online. Um, people ask me how I get my inspiration from and uh, most of the time I get from nature and I love being in nature, especially in Tucson. I see so many cactus, which I never really seen when I grew up. So I really enjoy being in nature. And I think the most important thing is the balance and being in nature, being in the studio, and being with my family. And those balance is very important for me. Thank you. Bye, sign up. <laughs>